This aircraft is very effective in realistic ground battles, especially if you are playing without a squad, since you have no friends. Because the plane can do well in every situation this game mode creates. It has bombs, a reliable way to destroy opponent's tanks, and at the same time it can be serious threat for other planes due to its agility and 37mm cannon's firepower. The video is about French plane P-63 C-5 King Cobra. Is it different from P-63 C-5 King Cobra in American Tech Tree? No. So watch one video and get the second review for free. The King Cobra is maneuverable. That's great. And not only because aircraft needs to be agile in order to dogfight or do other animal activities, it also helps to drop bombs on your opponents as you can pull out of the dive while being closer to the target or make last second trajectory adjustments that would be impossible to make with the heavier planes that have more inertia. The plane can carry up to three 500 pound bombs, so bomb precision matters because they don't contain that much explosive to be used from higher altitudes. 500 pounds is not a guaranteed kill of course, but when there are no SPAAs to prevent you from getting close to opponents, you should be able to destroy enemy tanks with quite high probability, even if they are moving. Two bombs under wings will be dropped separately from one under the fuselage, which allows you to use them twice. Usually one drop will lead to one kill. But as long as we have players that like to camp in the same spot in groups, it's completely normal to occasionally make a double kill even if you weren't expecting to hit other enemies in that area. In theory you can wipe out an entire enemy team if they all stay together, but for some reason opponents don't want to cooperate and even shoot back when you get closer. The only problematic thing regarding bombing is plane's maneuverability at high speeds. Once you reach indicated airspeed of around 700 kph, the plane starts to feel like a brick. And bricks are not very maneuverable. Though it's not something that applies only to this aircraft. It's more or less universal drawback of any plane at similar battle rating. After getting rid of additional weight called bombs, the plane becomes well positioned to fight enemy aircraft. Usually I confidently engage in dogfights, since the King Cobra can easily outmaneuver all these heavy attackers that are so popular in tank battles because of their ability to carry a lot of bombs and rockets. The King Cobra can deal with enemy planes in two ways. The boring way, using 450 Cal Browning machine guns, and fun way, with the help of 37mm auto cannon. One high explosive round fired from this cannon usually instantly destroys lighter one-engine fighters. Heavier planes need at least couple hits, but on the other hand they are much easier to hit in a first place, which is important since the cannon has its own limitations. First of all it has around 5 times lower rate of fire compared to machine guns. Additionally, unlike machine guns, it must be fired in small bursts, since once it overheats just a little bit, basically after a few shots, projectiles will have huge dispersion. And finally, you can only carry 58 of these rounds. But all these drawbacks are compensated with satisfaction. There are three things that you can watch forever. Flame, running water, and how single 37mm round one-shots an enemy plane. When there are no planes in the sky and no bombs under wings, it's possible to get a few additional frags by engaging tanks with machine guns, though you have quite a limited amount of ammunition, 900 pieces of ammunition to be exact. That's only slightly more than 200 rounds per machine gun. At first glance, 37mm cannon might sound like an effective weapon to use against tanks because of its caliber, but it is not that useful since the damage of armor piercing round is not very impressive to say the least, and it has only 43mm of penetration, 
just slightly more than machine guns. For comparison, Soviet Yak-90 uses similar caliber incendiary rounds with up to 60mm of penetration and even that felt underperforming. So I used default belt with high explosive rounds only. That leads to being quite effective against planes or open top vehicles and not so good against heavier tanks. Unusual thing about the plane is that its engine is placed in the middle of the fuselage behind a pilot. It might offer some additional protection for him when someone is chasing you. But on the other hand, the last thing you want when trying to get away to absorb incoming projectiles with your engine. Because apparently planes really need those engines to function properly. The plane also has usual armored glass and armor plates around the pilot that can stop smaller rounds or high explosive fragments, but I wouldn't say that it noticeably helps with survivability. Usually after receiving some damage your wings or control surfaces will break and it doesn't really help that the pilot is still alive. In general I really enjoyed playing this plane mostly because of how straightforward and easy to use the vehicle is in all situations. Even with my basic flying skills, I found the dogfighting to be manageable. And my only strategy, with all planes, is turning towards opponents until they end up in my crosshairs. Bombs are also easy to use. All I had to do is just fly towards opponent and make sure to release bombs before crashing. Even landing on an airfield is more simple than many other planes. The plane has a wheel in front, so it's practically impossible to flip over while braking. I would rate this plane 8, satisfying explosions out of 10. King Cobra is a universal vehicle that can effectively deal with ground and air units. Maneuverability not only helps in dogfights, but also allows you to get very close to tanks, so that you can knock into closed hatch and drop the bomb inside once someone opens it to see who's there. 37mm cannon is a little skill or luck dependent, but very deadly and even more fun. If you want to see how the already mentioned Yak-9 T with Soviet 37mm cannon performs, here is my recommended review in top left corner. Otherwise, in the bottom left, there is whatever YouTube thinks is the best for you.